Shenandoah National Park lies within the Appalachian Mountain Range and is home to over 300 different kinds of animals, including 24 species of amphibians. Of those, 14 species are salamanders. While you can find salamanders throughout the Appalachian Mountain Range, three peaks in Shenandoah National Park are the only place, not only within the range, but in the entire world, where one species, the Shenandoah salamander, can be found. This means that it is endemic to Shenandoah National Park, and its small population places it on the endangered species list. The redback salamander also uh, occurs in and around the Shenandoah salamander habitat, um, and it's thought that it, uh, the redback salamander is a competitor of the Shenandoah salamander. And one reason why um, it was listed as an endangered species is because folks were concerned, the Fish and Wildlife Service was concerned, that the Trinidad salamander would go extinct due to competition from the redback salamander. There are a few main threats to the Shenandoah salamander. This competition and its limited habitat are too, as it needs some very specific conditions in order to live. Because the Shenandoah salamander and the redback salamander also are sensitive to this, the kind of temperature and the relative humidity, the, the moisture on the surface, um, when it's hot and dry or when it's cold and frozen, the salamander goes below ground. And so there's really only, only kind of two seasons in which it's above ground and available to be detected. That's in the spring, um, you know, just after snow melt, when it's starting to warm up, when the soils, is, soils are still moist and the temperature is, is low. Um, in the summer, when it gets hot and dry, the salamander first retreats under rocks and logs where it's a little bit cooler and a little bit wetter. It's difficult to answer a lot of the questions because they are so rarely seen on the surface. There are maybe 90% of them below ground at any given time. So it takes a lot of effort to think about the difficult questions that they wanted answered. So they ask for USGS help. We started with just figuring out where they currently occur because it, the species had not been worked on for decades. Since it was listed, research was really limited because they did not want the species to be disturbed, which makes total sense. Consistent research has led to many new discoveries about these small but important animals. We know more. They're nocturnal, carnivorous, and terrestrial, meaning they live on land. And Due to research, we have clues as to what their life in the past may have looked like before being isolated on these mountain peaks. We know from genetic evidence that it had a much broader distribution way back in the Pleistocene. So the Shenandoah salamander probably occurred all the way down to the, the valleys um, surrounding the Shenandoah, Salman, uh, Shenandoah um, National Park um, mountain range. Um, as the climate warmed, the Shenandoah salamander kind of retreated up to these three peaks in the park, um, where now currently it has a, uh, the smallest range of any terrestrial vertebrate at just one square kilometer. They really like rock outcrops, especially with a lot of moss, especially in very moist. Recent rain is especially great. You would think that they would really like warm conditions, but we actually find them on the surface earlier in the spring than you might expect. So cool to warm, not hot. It can't be windy because that makes their skin dry out rather quickly if they're active on the surface. It's important to understand its past, to concentrate on why it became threatened and what concerns to its future may be. So one of the main questions is what limits the range of the Shenandoah salamander. Previously, it was thought that the main limiting factor was competition with a similar species, Plethodon cinereus, the red-backed salamander. It turns out that it's probably more complicated than that. In some areas of the range, we found that the most limiting factor is probably moisture in the air, especially at lower elevations as relative humidity changes. And if you spend any time in Shenandoah National Park, especially in the higher elevations, you'll notice how fog clings to the highest elevations. And we think that has a lot to do with where the Shenandoah salamander loves to live. There are still influences of the redback salamander in parts of the range, but we're not sure how strong that is relative to the uh, moisture factor. So that's one of the things we're still working to resolve. You know, we have, the, we have this emerging sense, this emerging understanding that climate change is influencing all kinds of natural systems. Um, the Appalachian region, the Appalachian mountains, are, um, they're getting warmer and drier. But the, I guess the, the 
our dogma, our understanding of what was controlling the Shenandoah salamander was this competition. So a lot of my research was, was thinking about, well, what factors um, increase competition? What factors might mitigate the effects of competition? And because they're, um, you know, terrestrial salamanders are sensitive to the um, moisture and temperature, um, I started looking at what might be setting the range limit of the salamander. This amphibian is only about the length of your index finger and lives underground much of its life. But it's very important to the balance of the ecosystem. It does need some specific features in order to survive in its habitat. Like food to eat, places to hunt and to burrow, and humidity in the air that's present above the fog line high on mountain peaks. In these areas, they can keep cool and moist an important factor to consider for an amphibian that lives on land rather than in the water. Turn over rocks and logs and, you, and it's hanging out under there, um, you know, waiting for insects to roam by, um, maintaining homeostasis, so it's, uh, it's um, w uh, water balance with the environment. So what can happen to this balance and the environment of the Shenandoah salamander due to climate change? Drier summers, we expect more frequent droughts, we expect higher temperatures. Uh, and being a salamander, they, um, they need to maintain this water balance. And if you have high temperatures uh, and low um, precipitation, it's harder for them to find uh, cool, wet areas for them. We are starting to see the effects of climate change here at Shenandoah National Park. The temperatures have been rising over the last couple of decades and Precipitation has also actually been rising a little bit, particularly in the summer and, and early fall, um, just a little bit. And those, both of those observations are consistent with the predictions that scientists have made about this region um, for what to expect with climate change. So, so far we are just a, a degree maybe warmer than we were 30 years ago, um, but it's going up pretty quickly. And so, we're, we're just at the beginning of the changes that we expect. The hemlock decline in particular, we have seen just within the years I've been working on the Shenandoah salamander, I have seen areas become completely open to sunlight where they were not before, sunlight on the forest floor. So that means salamanders living there are experiencing drier and potentially warmer temperatures than they did just a few decades prior. Hotter temperatures and more frequent droughts could cause some serious impacts. How could these changes to temperature, precipitation, extreme weather events, and the makeup of the environment itself around the Shenandoah salamander impact it specifically? The Shenandoah salamander is very sensitive to temperature and humidity, and so climate change is expected to change both of those. Um, and particular temperature is potentially problematic because salamanders prefer cool, moist habitats. And so as that temperature rises, there's likely to be less of that cool, moist habitat available. And because the Shenandoah salamander lives at the top of the mountain, uh, where there is no upslope habitat to retreat to, uh, they are likely to just get, their range is likely to get smaller and smaller as, as climate changes. So Shenandoah salamanders retreat underground when conditions get unsuitable for them. So that happens every year typically in the summertime. So it gets too hot and they are able to go underground to, to get cooler temperatures and, and retain the moisture in the soil. Um, but under climate change, those conditions may uh, decrease so that there's less time when they're able to be up at the surface, uh, finding food, reproducing, and doing all the things that they need to do. Um, and so as climate changes, the windows of opportunity for them may, may re become smaller and are, that would be problematic for them to uh, complete their life cycle. Climate change is impacting Shenandoah National Park, the Shenandoah salamander, and the world as a whole. We understand some of what is happening due to it and can use this information and this research to be able to shape the future of each of these. It's hard to mitigate climate change because it's, um the generating factors are outside of the National Park Service control, right? It's outside of our control to change the things that are influencing climate just in the small area of land that, um, that's managed by the Park Service. Um, but there may be things that we can do to mitigate the effects. So if we know that um, hotter and drier conditions are um, 
are reducing the viability of the salamander or increasing the extinction risk of the salamander, um, we can think creatively about how we can manage the forest or manage the habitat to make it uh, wetter and make it cooler. And so we're working with the National Park Service to come up with those kinds of creative management ideas that are um, within the ability of the Park Service to implement. Shenandoah National Park is here for people and nature to enjoy. So managing a changing world allows for this to continue for generations to come. So I think people know fairly well that how temperature is going to change with climate. What we don't know well is how moisture is going to change. And that's difficult to predict. Scientists have a really hard time predicting how precipitation patterns and timing are going to change. And from what we, from what we know for the Shenandoah salamander, the moisture is really important. So we have temperature and moisture loggers out in the woods as we speak. Annually, we pull down those temperature and moisture readings and update our predictions. But the key will be the next 50 to 60 years. And as climate scientists inform us as to what those predicted outcomes will look like, we'll have a better idea of what that means for the Shenandoah salamander.